Hello everybody. I want to talk to you today about the willingness to wake up. Now, when I talk about this willingness to wake up, it's sort of, it feels funny because I know that when I was a seeker, that there was just this dying urge to wake up. I mean, I just had to wake up. I just wanted to wake up so very, very badly. What I didn't realize at that time, but I do now, is that the whole time that I was really just dying to wake up. I was dying to wake up with everything on my terms. So what I mean by that is that I was willing to wake up as long as I had a big explosive experience, a nice spiritual experience and, you know, and I, and I would be blissful and everything would be blissful and okay and wonderful. And I'd never have another problem for the rest of my life. I was waiting for that. Okay, that, that, and, and when, on, when I had that big explosion followed by the rosy path, then I would be willing to wake up to that. The problem is, is that that path has no end. And I know because awful lot of you are on it. And I'm just suggesting that you come off of it. I'm not suggesting that it's wrong that you be there. I'm just saying, take a look and see if you still want to be there. Okay. Because the willingness to wake up is the willingness to do a number of things. It is the willingness, number one, how about that victim story you've got? Give up on that victim story. Be willing to recognize that it's not true. Because the thing is, is to understand that when you wake up, whenever anybody wakes up, the, the, one of the first things that they're going to notice, if not in these words and in, in something similar, is that they've been wrong about everything their whole life. That's what I realized. Gee whiz, I've been wrong about everything my whole life. <laughs> No exceptions. That's, that's how far awakeness cuts. It goes right to the bone. And if the bone is holding out on God until this shows up, this arising shows up, the way that the seeker wants it to before it's going to wake up, you just forget it. Just forget it. I've dealt with people who've been 30, 40, 50 years on this path. Not this path, this, this doesn't have a path, but on the, well, the so-called spiritual path. And they've been waiting because they knew they were gonna get it really soon. They were gonna get it right after. They were gonna get it just beyond. See, but you're never gonna get it. You get it or you don't. And when you get it, you don't understand it. It means that you grok it. it. means that you, awakeness, understand that true nature, it's when true nature discovers that it's true nature and not one of these. That's what awakening is. It's true nature is waking, wakes up to its own true nature. It's not like there's a Fred that wakes up to true nature over there. There's, there is no over there, over there. There's only me, there is only this. And you may not like what you see, but you may as well get used to it because this ain't going anywhere until it does. And that's not up to me or you. There'll just be a checking out of the unit, we should say, which it, it happens. You know, it happens to all of them. I can't stand this. <laughs> I just love that compulsivity, don't you? I don't care what's going on. That statue is crooked and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> So there is, I was unwilling to let that stay there just because it's not in the nature of the unit. There's no I who was unwilling. It's just a, it's a way of speaking. There was an unwillingness to live with the statue being like that. How do we know? Because the unit moved to straighten it out. Did I make that decision? Well, who are you talking about? There's no Fred Davis here to make a decision about what Fred Davis should do. There's only, there's a unit here and speaking through this unit, there's a certain awakeness. You'll notice it because it's the very same awakeness that is hearing these words. This is the very same awakeness that's speaking these words is the very same awakeness that's hearing these words right now. So there has to be the willingness to wake up right now there has to be the willingness 
to be wrong. There has to be the willingness to drop the victim story. You have to want to wake up more than you want to stay asleep. That comes from willingness. Now, who am I talking about? These are just words. I can't actually tell you the truth. So I'm telling you what it feels like. And that'll just have to be close enough. It's, it's yours from there. It's my job to present the truth. It's your job to take it if you want to. And if you don't, no skin off my teeth, right? I, I'm not here. To, just for, I get an awakening session. I'm not there to wake anybody up. I'm there to see if there's somebody there that wants to wake up. <laughs> Because if there is, they will. And if there's not, they won't. And I don't control that. Nobody controls that. It happens or it doesn't. There's no comparison of that. There's never been an awakening session where somebody didn't wake up where they should have. And there's no, never been an awakening session where some, somebody uh, didn't wake up and they should have. Or someone did wake up when they shouldn't. There's only this, there's no comparison to this. You'll notice that. Remember Krishnamurti said that suffering begins with comparison. So there's no comparison to this. There is no alternative to this. There's just this. And what I want you to notice is that not only is there just this, but there's just this as it is. That as it is part is hard to swallow, but we gotta swallow it. But when I say we got to swallow it, what we got to, all we, all that have, I say that as if there's somebody here, we're just using words. There is, there will be a sense that there's, like there's someone who got something, but that's just what it looks like from the outside. From over here, it won't be somebody that got something it'll be nothing that just got nothing. <laughs> That's the truth. It'll be nothing that just got, just came to see nothing. The willingness to wake up may mean the willingness to meditate. That's not a willingness on your part, and that's not a practice that I could ever assign you. You just may notice that meditation has occurred, and then there was enlightenment, but that doesn't mean the meditation had caused it. It means that the two things sometimes overlap. There's no other practice that I can give you other than to suggest non-dual inquiry but there's no, and, and even, and I'm not giving that to you. I'm just suggesting non-dual in, uh, inquiry take place. And it'll look like there's a me and a you and that we're doing it. But there won't be. There'll just be one of us in a chair or two of us and talking to each other, whatever. Inquiry will take place. No one will do it. No one will get it. Enlightenment will occur, but not to anybody. If you witness somebody being enlightened, you're witnessing a lie. <laughs> you, you're, you're the one telling yourself the lie, which is, wow, look at that guy. He's waking up. I can't believe it. I wish I was waking up. Nope. There's no guy over there that's waking up. So there has to be the willingness to be nothing. That is not an easy pill to swallow, is it? The willingness to be no thing. Because there's, that's what, that, that's actually what you are. You're not some fabulous creature or some wise old lady on a throne or something. You are, uh, you're this. You're what's talking, you're what's hearing. You're what's willing to come to see the truth. Or you're what's not willing to come to see the truth. But it's not really that there's a you over there or that there's anyone who comes to see the truth. It's just a willingness. 
There's just a willingness to accept this as it is. There's just a willingness to see that there's no other course, that there's no better way. If it's raining, it's raining. I don't give a damn about what should be going on because there is no what should be going on. It's raining. And if I'm trying to live outside of the rain, I'm living in the rain. I'm not only insane, I'm suffering and insane. Willingness becomes the willingness to go beyond what you know. And I don't know how that happens. It just does sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. But honestly, it, it appears to me that that can be encouraged. It looks like I can encourage you. It looks like I do on a very regular basis. But when I say that, I'm speaking kind of from the Fred unit, which is a non-existent position, but we're, you know, sounds good. <laughs> I am so sorry. I wish that I could just sit down and just tell you, just put it out there. This is the way it is. Well, I can do that because this is the way that it is. What's that mean? It doesn't mean anything. What's the purpose of this? Whatever you assign. In other words, there's not anything that I can explain to you because in even talking about explaining something to you, what I'm doing up is, is reaffirming the idea in your head that there's a you over there. And there, there's an enlightened Fred Davis over here that is trying to help you, the poor slow one, get to where you ought to be. You ought to be enlightened too. You should be enlightened like me. There's no one that's enlightened. There's enlightenment, but nobody has it. Nobody gets it. Nobody lives it. Enlightenment lives as enlightenment. That's it. But there's not, like when we're talking about abundance, it's not like there's a Fred Davis who suddenly gets the magical something and then walks around knowing this magical something all the time. It can kind of feel a little bit like that, but it's not true. There's no Fred Davis. There is awakeness. There is, a, there is indeed some localized attention here. But this localized attention, typically, I'm not talking about me necessarily, might be talking about me as well. Certainly in the old days, I can tell you it was me, that this attention that's right here, right now, it was unwilling to pay any attention to itself. It paid attention to the content of this arising. What can I fix? What can I get? What can I do? What can I improve? What can I tweak? It was all about the content and never about the contenter. <laughs> Never. It was all about the, ex the experience and not about the experience-er. See? And the ex these experiences come and go, you'll notice, quite rapidly. They come, they go, they come, they go. You can't get attached to any of these experiences. Well, I mean, you can, but you'll suffer if you do. So, you know, make that deal with yourself. The willingness to wake up means the willing to come to know nothing. When prior to enlightenment, I thought that when I woke up, I would suddenly know everything. And instead, what happened when I woke up was I noticed I don't know anything, including I didn't even know what I was. And I still don't. Going on 15 years later, I still don't know what woke up. I don't know what I am. I know who. I know I am awakeness. I know I am consciousness as expressed by awakeness. But I don't know what that is. It's just code. Just a code word, awakeness, awareness. Consciousness, because there's no one that can become aware or awake. There's no one to go to sleep, so there's no one to wake up. There's only awakeness, and you will notice there's nothing in that that indicates that there's a capacity for sleep, and there's not. There's no sleeping. 
you awakeness can convince yourself that you are asleep and that you've missed everything and that this is things shouldn't be like this blah 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 so be willing to drop everything I see people come into sessions. I had a session today with a woman in Germany, been on this path forever. She was at a retreat in Germany. Someone, she said, uh, we told the person next to her, I really want to wake up. And they said, oh, well, you should call this guy. <laughs> and she did at the end of the session today. I said, so that woman at the retreat was right, wasn't she? And she said, yes. <laughs> so I don't even know why I told that story, but I did. So I can't say that I shouldn't have story got told the story was told but i didn't do it there's no one here to do it i'm open to that i'm open to the idea that there's no one here i'm open to the idea that i don't know what's going on i'm open to the idea that i can't find a problem here in the absence of a friend are you willing to look at that i can't find a victim story in the absence of a friend i can't find a less than story in the absence of a friend nor can i find a more than story in the absence of a friend. Am I willing to notice that I am not? Your true nature is not really it's a subtle presence. It's really a subtle absence. It is by your absence that all of this presence can present itself. This is not other than you, but it's not equal to you. There's nothing equal to you. There's no opposite to you. Just this, as it is. And then what we can get to a place where we come and see, hell, there's not even this. <laughs> but we won't go there right now, okay? You can come to the coming. We can go there in private session, maybe. Or maybe even in a salt song, but not here. <laughs> I have done it here, but I, you know, it's just not, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't work the way I would like it to. It works the way it works, though. And at least it works. And all I care about is what works. You can tell me why willingness, you can sit down and you can tell me why you know for a fact that willingness has nothing to do with awakening. But you will not be awakening when you tell me that. You will be protecting a cave of, you're protecting your little cave of knowing. You want so badly to be a knower. I wanted so badly to be a knower. And I came and became an unknower. And now an unteacher, right? And I'm working on a, a, a book that's got un in the title. I got three already, now there's the fourth one coming. It's got an un in the title. I won't tell you the name of it though because somebody who assures God will steal it before I get to it. So not that there's anybody else, but they're, you know, from this unit standpoint, it's got its own fish to fry. <laughs> this unit's got a house payment and a, and a car payment, and it's got a wife that stays hungry and two little dogs that never heard anything of anything but more. Give me more of all this good stuff. When you come to see the truth, more, the craving for more actually drops away. And it may watch away, drop away gradually, but <clears throat> it's dropped away gradually here. I can't say it's not that it's gone. The unit can still enjoy shopping on Amazon, but I don't need anything. I need Amazon like I need a hole in the head. I need planet Earth like I need a hole in the head. This is just a story that I have an important teaching because there's no one here to have it. The living method may be an important teaching, but if, if so, it's not because it's my teaching, it's because it's yours. You left it for yourself like an alarm clock in the drain so that you could wake up very swiftly and easily 
through any unit that was willing. <laughs> I'm sorry, this has turned out to be a kind of a silly video, really, but it's dead serious. Because it's the insistence on having truth be something other than this. It's the insistence on having oneness not look like this, not be like this. It's the insistence on insistence instead of the willingness to just be willing. There's an attitude of openness, meaning that things come in, there is a, a, there's a little examination, and then out that thought goes. Now, I can believe that thought or not believe that. If I believe that thought, likelihood is I'm going to suffer from it. Because as soon as I believe that thought, there's going to be a believer. And once there's a believer, you're down the rabbit hole. So I think I'll just go ahead and close out. Um, thanks a million for tuning in. Don't forget that there's the other channel, the um, Fred Davis Satsang channel. You can just put that in, uh, probably put it in Google and come up with it. Certainly you can put it into YouTube and come up with it. Whole new set of things that Roland is taking care of for us over there. So I thank you so much. I love you. I'll see you later. Bye.